Hi, and welcome back to my channel. Or if you're new here, hi, I'm Tess Lark, and I hope you're having a wonderful day. This is an art and beauty channel, so if those are videos that you're interested in, make sure you're subscribed because I'm here for you every single week. And this week, I thought that we would talk about some resin fails. Not everything in life works out the way that we expect it. And sometimes when we're trying new techniques for the first time, things don't go according to plan. I wanted to share some fails with you guys just because I feel like sometimes on social media, people can make it seem like everything that they touch is golden, everything that they try for the first time they're great at, everything's perfect. And I think that's not very genuine. And I would like to just kind of show you guys my recent fail and document the process just so I can use it for future reference to look back and figure out where everything went so wrong. And very quickly, I would just like to thank everybody who has been here and showing up to my videos. It really means a lot to me. And also, if you do like this video, please make sure to go ahead and give it a like because it helps out my channel a lot. And it also lets me know that I'm making content that you want to see from me. So the two fails that I'm going to be talking about today are this little sphere with a bumblebee. If you can see here, it is very, very bubbly. My bee is not in the right position. Just the whole thing is a bit of a disaster. And also this resin geode coaster, which is a technique that I'm learning and working on. This guy's a little blurry. It didn't come out so well. And I wanted to just talk about why I thought that was and also um, creativity and failure and all of that in general. I also wanted to say something else. What was it? Oh, yeah. So Chad, uh, my boyfriend and I recently went on vacation back to Kansas City to visit his friends and family. I did post a vlog about that. I will link it down below if you're interested in seeing that. But I feel like ever since we came back home, everything that I touch like creatively is just not working out for me. Like I was very, very excited to hop right back into electroforming and making jewelry and restocking my Etsy. And I was trying out a new copper conductive paint and and all of my pieces turned out really, really bubbly and some of the copper was actually like peeling away from the stones. And it was just a disaster in a way that I haven't felt in a while and so I, I ordered some new paint and in the time that I was waiting for that paint to come I was like you know what let's go ahead and focus on some resin work that's really fun let's do some stuff like that and the two projects that I was really excited about um one being this little sphere with this bee that we actually found dead in our Airbnb in Kansas City and the other one being this resin geo coaster I tried both of them out and they both failed and so I kind of feel like right now I can't make anything and my career as an artist is over. It's just something I have to work through and I want to just talk about it. Let's just talk about it. Let's put it out there. So yeah, let's hop right into this video. Okay, so for my B, I went ahead and I did one layer of resin. I used white and clear resin because I wanted to have this kind of like smoky resin effect going on with it. And so I went ahead and poured that and then I let it set and then the next day was when I went ahead and placed my bee. I started by using some jeweler's glue to place some ferns that I had pressed and dried. And the ferns stayed down pretty well, but when I placed the bee and then started pouring the resin, it pretty much immediately floated up to the top. So I definitely think that I mean, there's so many things that I would do differently in the future, but for one, letting the glue set before pouring the resin, but also I pretty much did this whole thing upside down, as you'll see later. <laughs> And then here's the process on the resin geode. I think that I had the right idea, but I don't know if my... I don't know if the resin was too liquidy or I didn't have enough colors, or variations, or maybe I should have tried a puddle pour in the center with some more clear and less white. Or maybe even using some sort of plastic bag, like a piping bag like I do for the flower technique would have made this better. I think that this effect that you get when you mix the clear resin in with the pigmented resins is really really cool but 
I just lost so much of it in the finished piece that I just, I just, I'm not sure. I also think I may have gone a little too hard with my heat gun. Um, I really wanted to kind of blend some of those lines out and get some cool effects going on, but in the end, I think it got a little bit too blurry. Um, and by the way, I will go ahead and list all of the items that I'm using below in this video. Um, if anybody's interested, they will be linked down below. Okay, so I went ahead and let my pieces harden up overnight, and I'm just gonna take them out of the molds now. The geode, I don't know if you can see, it's kind of getting there. There's some interesting things going on, but overall it's not really well defined. I feel like there's not enough difference in the colors. Yeah, just not my favorite. But if you can see in here, we actually did get some pretty cool depth and some cool things going on. It's just still not quite right, honestly. And then for the little bee guy, he floated up to the top. <laughs> So I can just already tell that there's some bubbles in there. It's, uh, I'm worried, but let's see. Also, I got really sloppy with the resin. It's kind of everywhere. So I'm gonna try to open this guy up. This is also my first time demolding a sphere. I have nails on right now, so we'll see how it goes. Okay, we're getting there. Oh, <laughs> drop it immediately. <laughs> Oh yeah, there's the top half. You can see there's so many bubbles. There's also this really rough piece um, on the top there. Let's see if we can get the bottom out. Again, this resin is like really on here. Okay, okay here we go. Now we're getting it. So, and it does have this like really big ring around it from where the two pieces of the mold meet, which is fine. I could sand that down. Um, I'm gonna pull some of it off, some pliers. Oh, this came out so rough, you guys. When we were on vacation, Chad found a dead bumblebee in our Airbnb. And so of course I wanted to save it and make something with it. So it was so cool looking. And so I wanted to make this cool little sphere and I was hoping that it would be sitting down with the ferns down in there. So I have some white on the bottom and then the fern and then the bee, but my little bee floated right up to the top. Also after doing this first experiment using a sphere, I definitely think that um, this part, the part with the little hole in it, so most sphere molds come in two pieces like this and there's a little hole in one side so you can pour the resin in and I think that this side should actually be the bottom. So if you look on this side, it has a nice smooth surface. And then this side has the little bump, which again, you can sand off, but just to make it a better finished piece, I think that this side definitely needs to be the top. I'm pretty bummed that the first sphere I ever made, I used this little bee because, uh, you know, I don't come across dead bumblebees very often. So I'm really sad that this is such a fail, but I also feel like I learned a lot. Definitely next time I'm gonna work as though this side was the top. And so I would maybe put a small amount of resin in and then put whatever I'm putting in their face down. So if it was a flower or an insect, um, if it was an insect, its belly would be facing up with its wings facing down. So you can see it at the top. Anyway, spheres, let me know if you guys are watching anybody on here that does a really good job making some resin spheres because I did just get these cool new molds and I want to play around with them some more, but also like look at all the bubbles in this. Oof. It's just rough, man, it's rough. And as for the resin geode, I think that what I need to do really is make my 
layers thinner, not thinner like in consistency, but make it so that there's more space in between and I can add some more variation in the color. Like there should be, I think a, a darker color along with this blue and maybe even doing some clear in the center. So the center is clear. Um, again, if you guys know anybody on here that does a great job making resin geodes, um, please let me know because I am always open to new tips and tricks. And one of the reasons why I really love YouTube is I personally taught myself how to craft and how to do a lot of like pour painting or even electroforming, doing my copper jewelry things. I self-taught myself all of that because other people were willing to share their skills on YouTube and I think that that is so valuable and I really I love being here for that same reason so yeah so if you guys know anybody that is doing a great job let me know so I can see their technique and practice some more and come back with some better as in geodes and spheres so working in a creative space and working for yourself it can be really scary when you start having these like fails and it feels like project after project you're not really showing up for or you're showing up for but it's just not working out um that is also kind of the fear in making analog art is that sometimes it doesn't work out and you don't really know until after you've put in all of the effort and the time so it can be really hard to just keep going and keep powering through but i think that it's important to keep in mind that sometimes it's two steps forward and then one step back and that's just the way that it goes there's always a learning curve um so for me these are both new techniques that i'm trying and it's okay if it's not perfect on the first time it's okay if it's not perfect on the fifth time but i think that the most important thing is that we just keep pushing through these creative blocks and these failures and learn from our mistakes and just keep creating for example i recently made this moon trinket tray and i did it in the petri dish style for resin and alcohol ink and i think that it turned out really really well but i've also been practicing this technique now for months and months actually the first time that i ever played around with resin and alcohol ink i made a video and i will link that down below if you guys are interested in seeing it but i felt like those came out as fails some of you were very nice and told me that you liked them but i, I knew that it wasn't what i was going for and now i think that i've got a pretty Pretty good handle on this technique so if you guys do want to see an updated version of that let me know and i'll post it i did post another sort of updated petri dish technique video also i'll link that below so you know as disheartening as it is to waste materials and time into something that you feel like didn't turn out the way that you want it to i do think that those are all steps to creating the things that you want to create it's just a matter of sticking with it hanging in there and trying again right in the wise words of Aaliyah if at first you don't succeed dust yourself off and try again right that's how I feel about it these are my fails I hope that this was entertaining for you and informative or maybe uplifting and just you know keep making your art keep going and I will see you next week bye